Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd. Continue on in our, uh, our dars, ala qidat wa satiya. Qala al-shaykh al-islam hafadhullah rahimahullah ta'ala qal Fala yanfuna anhu ma wasafa bihi nafsuhu wa la yuharrifuna al-kalim an muwadi'ihi. ولا يلحدون في في أسماء الله وآياته ولا يكيفون ولا يمثلون صفاته بصفات خلقه لأن لأنه سبحانه لا سمي له ولا كف ولا كف له ولا ند ولا ند له ولا يقاس بخلقه سبحانه وتعالى فإنه أعلم بنفسه بغيره وأصدق قيلا وأحسن حديث من خلقه شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى he said the attributes with which he has qualified himself meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those attributes of his of his self, fi thatihi, are not denied by Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, nor do they commit tahrif, meaning Ahl Sunnah does not change, as we mentioned, they do not distort on the basis of reasoning, using qiyas, using their reasoning by different statements, nor do they indulge in uh, misinterpreting uh, the meaning of the names of Allah and his verses, nor do they regard his attributes as like the attributes of, uh, of, the cre- uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creatures, nor do they describe their, the kafiyah, how, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes are. The reason is that nothing is in the likeness of Allah, nor is anything comparable or a partner to him subhanahu wa ta'ala nor do we make analogy from amongst Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creatures to demonstrate a likeness and comparison between him and his creatures subhanahu wa ta'ala for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he knows best his own self and the selves of, of others of his creation what he says is the truth, meaning there is nothing after Allah, the, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most truthful speech. And it's the best. And his messengers' speech, his messengers are true. Alayhim after the salatu They have, uh, and, and, and so that is the, the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, which illustrates for us many, many important things. Uh, first, as Imam Ahmed said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Allah shall be qualified only with those attributes with which he has qualified himself or his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has qualified him. Nothing should be said beyond the Quran and the Hadith. So this was a statement of Imam Ahmed. It shows us how the Salaf, they took that qaida, that principle that we mentioned previously in our previous uh, durus or previous uh, lectures in which Shaykh al-Islam said that Ahlul Sunnah, they describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with how he describes himself in the Quran and how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes him in the authentic Sunnah. This is the, the minhaj or the methodology of how Ahlul Sunnah describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Ahmed's statement bears witness to that. Imam uh, Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, his teacher, Nu'man ibn Hamad says, Whoever described Allah in the likeness of his creature, he has committed kufr, meaning he has disbelieved in, in the religion. And if someone denied the attributes by which Allah qualified himself, then he has also committed kufr. 
the attributes by which Allah qualified himself or those that were narrated by him by his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will not be uh is not considered tashbih or tamthil, you know, making a light, likeness between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, uh, creatures and himself subhana. So, this statement by Nu'man ibn Hamad, the teacher of Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, rahimahullah jami'an, that where he said, whoever described Allah in the likeness of his creature has committed kufr. So that shows us by making a likeness to Allah is disbelief. If you say uh, Allah looks like this, uh, uh, which is similar to such and such, because we don't have knowledge about these things. And Allah has denied that there's a likeness between him and his, his uh, creatures and his creation. So if someone makes a likeness between Allah and his creation, then they have committed kufr. And likewise, if someone uh, has denied the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned the Jahamiyyah, and this is why the Salaf, uh, there was ijma' from the Salaf, they had a consensus on takfir al Jahamiyyah, that the Jahamiyyah were disbelievers. Why? Because they totally negated, they fell into the most extreme ilhad in asma'i la wa sifatihi and in the uh, as we mentioned before the ta'til they were the mu'attala khalis they were the most extreme of the mu'attala of those people who denied the attributes names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those people who negated and that was ta'til, from the kalima ta'til. When we said, yu'attilu, uh, uh, attala yu'attilu, ta'til. Mu'attil. Mu'attil is the one who does it. So, the jahmiyyah fit that characteristic. So that is kufr as well. And that is the primary reason that Ahl sunnah and the, the, especially the early generations of those times, they made takfir of the the uh, Jahmiyyah. They consider them kuffar, uh, disbelievers in Allah wa Rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the reason why Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah do not make, do not ask how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat are or make timthil, make a likeness or a comparison between him and his, cre uh, his creation or his creatures. And, and that there, that is because there is no parallel between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's self, uh, which deserves his name. Nor is there anything of such greatness which equals him uh, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al uh, in Surah Al uh, Maryam, Hal ta'lamu lahu samiyan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Do you know of any who is similar to him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked this question. And this right here also for us coming from America gives us a little bit of in gives us insight into those groups like the Nation of Islam and those groups like the Five Percenters and and other groups that came from from uh, originally they came probably from the Khadiani or Ismaili Ismailia and in their because they share aspects of their creed and perhaps as they said, Master Fard Muhammad, he may have been uh, a person from the Khadiani who had w even went astray from that dalala, from that misguidance. And they make a likeness, especially the five percenters, as they call themselves the five percent nation. They describe themselves and make a likeness between themselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, they, can, they call themselves Allah. And they make such tah they make tahrif with ta'til to such an extent that they are have more kufr perhaps than the Jahamiya even. So there is no way or shape or form that you can call those people your Muslim brothers and sisters because they call themselves gods. They commit shirk al-akbar, shirk sarih, that there's no debate with Ahl Islam about their 
kofr, their disbelief. They consider themselves gods. They call themselves Allah. They call themselves, they take the names, some of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They call themselves uh, names like so-and-so God or so-and-so Allah, uh, etc. And they are doing the most extreme of ilhad. So that's relevant for us in the West, especially in America, because we have to deal with those uh, people who have that wicked type of innovation, that kufr, uh, that bid'a mukaffara, that innovation which takes you out of the fold of Islam. And in fact, they never entered the fold of Islam. وَعِيَادُ مِنْ مِنْ كُفْرَ وَالْدَلَالُ وَالْإِلْحَادُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, He says, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْوَانْ أَحَد As we mentioned in our last dars, And there is none co-equal or comparable unto him. So that lets us know, and there's so many verses in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear for us that there is nothing comparable to him, there is no likeness with him subhanahu and that he is far removed from any of their false claims and their deviance and their misguidance. Moving on to another important point here, which Shaykh al ama Salih bin Fozan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala mentioned. He mentioned some five types of ilhad. The point of ilhad and ilhad here, Hopefully we'll be able to see this uh, correct uh, on the board here. Ilhad refers to it refers to falsehood, like preferring falsehood to that which is correct. This is a, a very general. Uh, I tried to translate the term. It is t- moving from that which is correct to that which is incorrect that which is misguidance. So it is actually preferring falsehood to that which is correct. And what we're referring to here, we're talking about ilhad regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. Ilhad bi asma'illah wa sifatihi. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Shaykh Salim bin Fawzan, Hafidhullah ta'ala, he mentions five types of ilhad. The first one, he said, al-awwal. He said, and to some al-asnam biha, katasmiyat al-allat min al-ilah, wal uzza min uzair, wa manat min munan. So, Sheikh Salim bin Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned the first type. He said, the first type of ilhad is naming idols by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names, or trying to uh, refer uh, either naming the idols by Allah, or naming Allah, trying to give Allah new names, which are in agreement with those idols. In the, for, and he gave some examples, like a lot, wal uzza, and a lot coming from ilah, meaning God, or al ilah, meaning which refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, Uzair, wal uh, Munat, min Mannan, Allah is al Mannan. So these are ways of ilhad by naming idols by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names or deriving their names from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names or vice versa. That all of this is a type of ilhad. This is uh, ref- preferring falsehood to that which is correct. The second type, a no, a thani, tasmiyatuhu subhanahu wa ta'ala bima la yulik bihi katasmiyat al nasara lahu aba wa tasmiyat al falasifa lahu mojibin o illat al fa'ila. So the, sh- the second type of ilhad that Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan mentioned, he said, it is naming Allah by unbefitting names. It is naming Allah the Almighty by names which are unbefitting to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And glorified be Allah, 
the all-glorified, the Almighty, who is far removed from this falsehood. So these names are unbefitting to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he gave an example. He said, like the way the Nasara, the Christians, say the Father, or say Father. So that is unbefitting for us to address Allah, our Lord, the one who created us, who has no likeness to his creatures, nor do his creatures have a likeness to him, to refer to Allah as our Father. In Islam, that is muharram, that is impermissible, and that is uh, a type of ilhad. And so, uh, this is uh, one of the examples. Another example, Shaykh Salim bin Fuzan mentioned, uh, the way the philosophers, they say, uh, they refer to uh, the, 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 the great reason, or the reason that everything is is done like for example when people say perhaps that might fall under this when people say mother nature for example or something like this or they refer to these forces that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created but they give these names and attributes they push that upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they push they they take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes and they project that on the creation Okay, so the great doer, or something like this, we would never refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as that, and that is a type of ilhad, that is naming Allah by unbefitting names, names that are not befitting for the creator of the heavens and earth. Uh, the third type, a no athalith, a no athalith, wasfuhu subhanahu wa ta'ala bima yunazzihu anhu min naqais. كَقُولِ يَهُودَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ فَقِيرٌ وَنَحْنُ أَغْنِيَاءٌ وَقُولُهُمْ يَدُ اللَّهِ مَغْلُولَةٌ وَأَنَّهُ وَأَنَّهُ اسْتِرَاحَ يَوْمَ السَّبْتِ تَعَالَى اللَّهِ عَمَّا يَقُولُونَ شيخ صلى الله عليه وسلم حفظ الله تعالى he said the third type he said it is their description of the Most Glorified, the Almighty, with those things which He is far removed from, and which denote uh, denote shortcomings and imperfection. Similar to the statement of the, the Yahud, the Jews, in which they said, as is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, that Allah is fuqir, fuqir, meaning Allah is, is in need, and that we are agniya, that we are uh, self-sufficient. Allah is in need and we are self-sufficient. وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ That was the statement of the Yahud. And also their statement in the Quran, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, that they said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's يَدُ uh, اللَّهِ مَغْلُولَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand is tied. So these are horrible and false accusations and claims and names which are unbefitting of the Lord of the heavens and earth, the creator of the heavens and earth, who is free from imperfection and who is not in need of anything in whom which we are in need of. And may Allah bless us to, to see him on the day of judgment. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So this is the third type. Naming Allah by something that denotes uh, shortcomings or imperfection. The fourth uh, type. Juhud or Jahad Ma'aniha wa haqa'ikaha Kekul al Jahamiya Innaha al Fav Mujarrida La Tatadaman Sifat Wala Ma'ani Kasamir La Yudilla ala Sama. والبصير لا يضل على بصر والحي لا والحي لا يضل على حياة ونحن ذلك. So Sheikh Salim bin Fazan, half of Allah Taala, he said the fourth type is those who negate or refuse. They negate the the meaning of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's names and attributes and their reality. And what their reality entails. Similar to the way the Jehemiah, that they said 
that what is meant by uh, those names is that those are just names to be pronounced and they do not include the characteristics nor any meaning for example for samir as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa huwa samiru basir that they say a samir that it means that it doesn't have it doesn't have it isn't evidence for sam for hearing a samir meaning the all hearing that that is not evidence for the characteristic of possessing hearing or hearing so basically they're saying it's just a name without any meaning so they they have negated the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name and his divine attribute that his perfect attribute of hearing all things and likewise they said al basir la yudlu ala basar that he, that seeing is not evidence for sight okay that uh that Allah the all seeing that it negates the that attribute that he possesses uh basar or likewise they also say al hayya that it is an evidence for life that Allah possesses hayat that he is al hayy al qayyum he is he doesn't need he does not die subhanahu wa ta'ala he has no end subhanahu wa ta'ala but he is al hayy he gives life he is the life giver but they say that that is just as if it's a name without any meaning that's basically that is ilhad by negating and refusing the correct meanings and negating and refusing those characteristics aslan this is why the salaf made takfir of the jahamiyah and then a no a khamis the last one the last uh type of ilhad that sheikh salib bin fazan mentioned he said a no al khamis he said tashbi sifatihi bi sifat khalqihi ka qawl al mumathal yad yadhu ki yadi ila ghayri dhalika ta'ala allah so the fifth type of ilhad that they meant that sheikh salim bin fazan mentioned he said that this is those making a resemblance between allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine characteristics with the characteristics or attributes of his creation similar to the way the mumathil they say that the hand of allah is like one of them might say the hand of allah is like my hand or 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 other than that from from types of tishbi that they make wa ya'ud billah min dhalik and allah is far removed from that misguidance and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as sheikh salim bin fazan mentions here he said waqad tawa'ada allah al mulhidin fi asma'ihi wa wa ayatihi bi ashadd wa'id fa qala subhanahu fi al ayat 180 or 180 min surah al a'raf wa lillahi al asma al husna fad'uhu biha وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ وَسَيَجْزَوْنَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, He says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَى الْحُسْنَى And for Allah is the, the, uh, the divine names, His divine names, or His beautiful, the most beautiful names. So call upon him, supplicate to him with those names. And leave off those who deny uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. Because they soon they, uh, they will get their uh, reward for what they did, meaning their punishment for what they did. So that shows us there that it's a, a very severe punishment and torment for those people who denied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes but ahlus sunnah follows that verse instead wallillahi al-asma' al-husna fad'u fad'uhu biha 
that Ahl Sunnah, they supplicate to Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, by his divine names and attributes, calling upon Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Ghafoor, Ya Ghafar, Ya Tawab, forgive me. They're supplicating as Ya Razak, you know, provide for me. They call upon those divine names and attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with so many of his divine names and attributes that we can call upon him in so many different ways in which they are munasib, in which ways which are befitting uh, of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and first and foremost by following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So it's imperative as Allah mentions in the Quran in several places that we should not be of those ahla ilhad, those people who deny or change, move move from the correct interpretation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes as He subhanahu wa ta'ala made clear in the Quran as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made clear in the authentic sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that the Salaf al-Saleh radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een that they uh, understood and supplicated to Allah by those divine names and attributes uh, that we should refer to the meaning that they left us with and not to that which is uh, according to our own whims and that we should not make a resemblance between Allah and His creation and we should avoid those things and those false lies that Ahl Ilhad, matter of fact you'll always find the people of Ilhad claiming against someone like Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah whose whole book that we're studying right now is ample evidence that he was not of those people of Ahl Ilhad but you'll find the very people of Ilhad people like Abdullah Hedari, who died just a couple of years ago, and his followers, the Ahbash, that those people in their wickedness and in their sinfulness and in their lies about Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and their Ilhad and their Zandaka and their denying of the beautiful Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they claim that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was someone who made a likeness to Allah and His creation. Uh, Sunnah is free from that and is far from that and the treaties, the evidence is, is in the statements of Shaykh al-Islam uh, it doesn't matter what they call it it doesn't matter what they say but the ibra bi haqaiq the truth is in what the Shaykh Shaykh al-Islam wrote about and what Shaykh al-Islam spoke about and what is recorded on Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah with Jannah to Firdaus and all of the scholars of Ahl sunnah and may Allah guide those scholars which are not from Ahl sunnah and those people close to the sunnah and may Allah forgive us all of our sins wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad